All right, well, how you doing, everybody? Well, it's been a long time. You know, I hate doing these videos, God. Uh, the amount of work that's involved with these, let me tell you, I'd rather be building guitars. So I just keep building guitars and not doing these videos, and so you guys are way behind in uh, seeing my work. Um, all you wonderful fans of the Zachary guitar. Uh, so what you're going to see this time is actually old news for me. I, I don't know how these YouTubers do it. I mean, they're cranking out videos daily. Like, how the, what the fuck? Don't these people have a life? Seriously, like, sitting there at the computer all day, you know, doing these... Oh, man. It's a sad life, really. Even if they have uh, 100,000 viewers or whatever, it's still a sad fucking life. I would not be doing that. I'd either be playing or building you know what i mean or doing other things in life than doing fucking videos for all you ungrateful i don't want to use any more swear words but you know what i'm getting at <laughs> so anyway um it's an interesting situation that went on i'm going to present to you a series of three instruments three instruments Okay, in one video. Uh, because they all kind of go together and all kind of happen by accident. See, I got to get inspired. You know, you know, these these pathetic individuals who call themselves guitar builders or, you know, guitar makers or luthiers or whatever the hell. Well, they're not. They're none of that. Because uh, I could not imagine myself you know mass producing instruments even mass producing them on a scale of uh 10 at a time even right even two at a time that are the same right i just couldn't do it i got to be inspired and then i get excited i dream it and then i create it and then when that's done, I don't want to do the same thing again. Then I have a new dream, see? So if you're going to respect these people who claim that they're guitar builders, which they are not, most of them have never built a guitar in their life, okay? They are businessmen and a lot better businessmen than I am. So if you're going to respect them, respect them for their business skills. But here we're talking about guitar building. So let's stick to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're popular. They're all over the place. They're they're paying big bucks for uh, 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 marketing, right? I don't know who they're reaching these days. You know, they're reaching all you boomers who are not buying any guitars. I know that, but it's nice to have you anyway. You're you're great people. I enjoy you. Yeah, I'm sure you're wonderful people. So nice to have you. I don't mind creating you uh, free entertainment. Well, actually, I do, for fuck's sakes. But here I go anyway. I'm documenting my work. I'm cataloging my work. All right. Uh, so that there's a web page and maybe a video for every creation that I make. So if you want to hang out for that, hang around for that, take, you know, not take part in it, but just hang around and watch. You're kind of like a peeping, peeping Tom. You know, you're kind of looking into my world a little bit. So, uh, voyeur, you're, you're voyeur. <laughs> that's a, that's a sexual fetish, but that's what you want to do. And I hope you're not a fucking tinkerer. Okay. Cause I don't want tinkerers on this site. I want guitar players. We're in desperate search of guitar players, especially new guitar players. All right, like real guitar players. None of this making noises on a seven or eight string noisemaker plastic, dipped in plastic piece of garbage. None of those types of guitar players. I'm talking traditional guitar players. Okay, that's who I want watching me. You tinkerers, well, 
<sighs> what do I do with you? There's nothing I can do with you. All right. So I'm just going to have to tolerate you and be tolerant, inclusive. <laughs> anyway, uh, where were we before I got distracted? The first instrument in the series is an amplifier. And that's what started it all, an amplifier. Now, it's a, it's a cool story. So going back minimum 10 years, possibly 12 years, uh, I was dealing with a company that is, uh, you know, a major company in uh, the supply of uh, guitar parts and amplifier parts. And one of the owners is, a, is an amp builder. So we started talking back at that time. And uh, I said, I always loved uh, the uh, Fender Champ. Uh, but I kind of said, well, I want, I want one like that, but I'd like to get one with high gain. See, this was the predecessor. This was my idea before the Skank amp came about, which is no longer in production, but I got two of them. Uh, and some people bought uh when we were making them i always wanted a small amp but with the potential of high gain which really was not around at that time or if they were around they were very buzzy and not very good sounding so before all that i always liked the champ the fender champ the tweed champ from the 50s okay you get what i'm saying do you know that amp if you don't know that amp, you should like go back to guitar education school or something. So he says, oh, I can make you one. I said, really? Okay. He said, I'm going to mod it in a certain way that's going to be high gain. A Tweet Champ high gain? Whoa, boy. Like, So my whole idea was that I didn't want to turn it up. Because even these things are very loud, right? So I didn't want to turn it up. You know, for bedroom. I'm a, I'm a bedroom player, okay? As most of you guys are. <laughs> I love these ads they run about gigs, playing gigs. Nobody fucking plays gigs. Come on. They're, they're trying to flatter the uh, non-existent uh, guitar consumer. Um, it's a hobby. Let's put it that way. It's a hobby. And those professionals that are were professionals at one time or think of them themselves as professionals even now, they're doing the same shit. You know what I mean? They're lucky to play a weekend here and there. But we got off topic again. Come on, man. Why do you distract me like this? You're in my brain. Get out of my brain so I can finish this fucking video and get on with my next project, please. So, where were we? Yes, Defender Champ. So, he said he's going to do this for me. I said, okay, go ahead. I commission you to do it. So, I don't know, a few weeks go by and he sends me this thing. So I get the chassis with all the electronics in it, no cabinet, no speaker, nothing. So I plug it into uh, one of my speaker cabinets and turn it on and the thing is zzz, buzz, 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 you know, uh, hum and buzz all over the, f I go, what the fuck? I mean, it played, but it was so noisy, I said, it's all my fault. I I took a gamble. And I guess this is the byproduct of a high gain circuit Fender Champ. The 5F1 circuit, right? It's not a Fender Champ, but it's a Champ Amp. So I said, okay, well. My fault. I, I can't play it like this. So I didn't even contact him because I thought, well, you know, 
It's high gain. It's going to be noisy. Stupid me, right? I know a lot more about electronics than I did back then. Now. So, I put it on the shelf. And there it sat. There it sat for years and years and years. And, and it just started bugging me and bugging me and bugging me. And, uh... I kept saying, I got to do something with this. Now, at the same time that this amp was built, uh, I met a guy online who specialized in woodworking, making cabinets. And he, thought, he did it out of his own shop, but he was, he was very good at it. And um, I commissioned a couple of cabs. One of them was for this champ that I got from this guy that built me the champ. And he did a very nice job with that cabinet. And I said, I want it exact, like a 50s, made of pine. And he says, you're gonna cover it? I said, no, 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 I'm gonna finish it, but probably like my guitars, and I'm gonna show off the wood. He says, you can't do that. Pine is not a, you know, it's naughty pine. It's gonna be full of voids, full of knots. Uh, it's very soft wood, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, hmm, you're right. So he made me the cabinet out of aspen, which kind of looks like pine, but it's perfectly clean and nice and white. So he made me the cabinet, unfinished, no grill cloth. Uh, baffle board wasn't painted, nothing. No handle, nothing. But... It was all bare, raw, but he did a very nice job. Instead of finger joints, he did uh, dovetail joints. So this thing is nice. Uh, and that sat on the shelf too, because I got nothing. I had nothing to use it f uh, with for. And so it kept bugging me, bugging me. So finally, this year, earlier this year, I said, "Okay, this is the next project." See. I, I I do projects. I don't mow the lawn like other people my age, you know. They got nothing to do all day. They're just waiting to fucking die. And they got no interests and no talents. And they love to mow the lawn. Now, you may be one of these guys, but I'm not one of these guys. I work with my hands. I create. I do art. Okay, that's what I gotta do inside it tells me that's what you gotta do you know it's like a like a an addiction i gotta do it and i've always done it since a little kid all right so i don't you know i don't do yard work i don't use the lawnmower well i have to but um so this is my next project, right? So I said, well, I've already done some cabs of my own. Uh, another one that this guy made me uh, for a Tweed Deluxe. And I've already done the natural oil finish like most Zachary guitars are and I wanted to do something different and cover it in tweed well uh, that's been done that's been overdone as well and you know bores me a tweed covered or Tolex covered you know mm, nah um besides I've never covered an amp before <laughs> Could have probably figured it out and done a good job, but uh, I'm too fucking lazy for that. I'm not set up for it. You need glue. You need, you know, it's basically, you got to be a tailor, right, for that kind of thing. So I said, what am I going to do with this cabinet? Well, but the problem was still the amp. The amp was the big problem. This thing was unusable. Okay? Unusable. And it had a switch on it. It had a little mini switch on top of it. It was drilled for a mini switch. 
and the mini switch turned the high gain mod circuit on and off. So apparently you went from a stock uh, champ to this supposed over the top high gain circuit, right? And I don't even know what he did. He never disclosed it. I just trusted him. I said, go for it. I'm taking a gamble, I thought. Go for it. So, I left the cabinet on the shelf and I took the amp down on my workbench and I went through the schematic carefully. And I thought, let's start fresh with this thing, okay? And to start fresh, I don't know what this guy did. He had all kinds of resistors on, on, on the first uh, valve, on, on the first tube, uh, all kinds of extra resistors on it. And um, the wiring was somewhat different. Uh, again, I didn't have a schematic for what he did. I don't know what the hell he did. I didn't want to bother him with it because, uh, you know, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. This thing fucking doesn't work, man. It's unusable. So I said, what I got to do is rip everything, all, rip the complete mod out and uh, get it back to complete stock, a stock champ. And I can live with that. If I can get a, a really good working stock 5F1 champ, original tweed champ circuit, I'll be happy. I saved it at least, right? So I got it back to original and I was quite happy with, with, with the work. It were, turned out really nice. I, I ripped it all out and, and a lot of the wiring wasn't done very smartly and cleanly the routing of the wires you know it would pick up noise that way as well so i rerouted some you know made it tidier inside as well and returned it to stock took out the mini switch no more use for it so i turned it on and guess what still buzz and hum all over the place it worked, worked great, but still unusable because all the buzz and the hum. So I said, okay, took out the original schematic again, looked it over. I said, what the hell is going? And then I found it. He didn't ground. He didn't ground the amp to the chassis. So the circuit wasn't grounded and that's why it was buzzing. Uh, one wire, but one very important wire. So I connected that wire and beautiful. So I said, okay, I've done it. Whatever that high gain mod was, you know, who gives a shit? Uh, it's back to the stock chain. But then I had this unsightly hole on top of the chassis. I said, I gotta do something with that. So then I heard of the uh, negative feedback mod, right? And, you know, without going into detail, uh, technical detail, uh, negative feedback basically feeds the uh, output signal back into the first, the second stage of the 12AX7, the first tube, the uh, preamp tube, feeds it back in there. Uh, feeds it back in there out of phase and and reduced reduced by a resistor and this way the amp is tamed and makes it smoother and everything so I've never experienced this uh, I never played around with this before so I put it in there and um, guess what I found I found that while well, I I modified it I took out the uh, negative feedback resistor from the 22K and I changed it to a 10K. And uh, there was that hole in the chassis, so I didn't want to use a switch on and off. 
I wanted it to be variable, so I put in a, a pot, a little mini pot. So now you can vary the negative feedback, right? And uh, uh, I have the original champ because the the champ was made with stock with negative feedback and uh i have that uh value bracketed in what i can get but i can give it a lot more negative feedback now some people also call this the the the, the raw switch if they use a switch you know an on and off switch it's 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 a raw it's it's a, called a raw switch and 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 if there's no negative feedback then the amp is just wild you know and they call that a raw sound right and you tend to think well wouldn't you want that why did what was leo thinking well no you don't want that you may want you always want a little negative feedback right which i am getting i'm getting less than what leo designed it as but i can also get exactly what leo designed it as and i can get more so what happens is uh it's very interesting uh, uh find for me because uh this negative feedback thing with the potential potentiometer um uh, it uh it smooths this amp out really nicely and if you've ever played a lot of tube amps playing them clean uh they're they're not smooth they got peaks and stuff and it's it's not fun to play them clean you know to be honest and this way this thing is nice to play clean if you're using even more negative feedback and then if you put a uh overdrive pedal to it just a bit oh it's beautiful it's beautiful singing uh overdrive on this amp and if you're using something like uh, well the best overdrive pedal ever created which is the uh you know going back 10 years now the zachary supernatural human touch tone optimizer with a built-in booster so if you got one of these, you can see yourself extremely lucky. I got one left for myself, and that's what I use. And it's got a booster on it, and I can control the boost with a uh, with a, with a pedal as well. So you'll hear the the sample that I did, the playing sample. But anyway, so I put this negative feedback thing, and what it actually is is if you're adding negative feedback as opposed to going in the raw direction you're now regardless what others tell you and and technically what is supposed to happen i'm telling you what i'm experiencing okay and what i'm experiencing what i'm experiencing is um as you're adding negative feedback now you're not touching the volume knob on the amp that stays the same okay but you're adding the negative feedback with the little knob and the overall volume drops considerably okay the high end drops so it's definitely not one of these piercing spiky overly bright fender amps especially playing it like with strat pickups or something or tally pickups so it becomes much more warmer it you get a lot of low end so you're playing a little champ like this with an 8 inch speaker you're not supposed to get low end right but I'm getting tremendous low end you, you're gonna hear if it comes through the microphone you're gonna hear it tremendous low end it's like <laughs> uh, and also the smoothness so what i realized i'm getting is i'm kind of getting a quasi 
master volume control. Okay, now others don't call it that, but in effect, that's what you're getting. That's what I'm getting. Now, I noticed, Champ, if you're playing a um, stock Champ in the bedroom, let's say you're watching TV or something and just noodling away, you can't get that Champ quiet enough and still have in the tubes hot enough to, to make a decent sound. You can't have the amp beside you and still watch TV while you noodle away. But with this little, you know, quasi master volume slash negative feedback control, variable negative feedback control, you're actually, you can bring down the volume of the amp while the amp is still turned up. Let's say it's turned up to three or four which is where you should have it to get the tubes working anyway. It's not a solid state amp where you can have it as low as you want. You got to get those tubes working. And um, so you can turn it up to that point and then turn the negative feedback on to the point where it's quite quiet and you can still play. So that's what I've done. And so... That's all I can tell you about it. It's on the website. I have the same story on the website. You're going to see a lot of, you know, pics of this amp. And, uh, oh, yeah, well, let me explain. Uh, I was starting to uh, talk about the finish of this amp. Again, I didn't want to co uh, uh, cover it with any fabric or, or Tolex. So I had this bright idea. See, I like to build guitars that never were, but could have been. And slash, should have been. You understand? Pretty clever, huh? So you see a lot of my, and you'll see it in the future if, when I get to them. You know, I've already got them made, but you've never seen them. You're going to realize that these these things are very very much based on uh, vintage instruments that might have been and could have been and should have been okay so I had this bright idea of what to do with the amp well you know the first four years of Telecaster production from 1950 to 1954 what how were they finished they were finished in butterscotch, right? Butterscotch nitrocellulose lacquer, the real stuff, not the nitrocellulose <laughs> phony <laughs> lie that your custom shop Fender Gibson is sprayed with. No, that's plastic, my friends, okay? That's fucking... How they get a lot, uh, get away with calling it nitrocellulose, I have no idea. When you take it off, it's like fucking rubber coming off, okay? Real lacquer is not rubbery, all right? It's not like uh, 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 silicone rubber, okay? And and I've 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 done that. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the future. I've I've stripped high end Gibsons. Um, and they don't even call it poly polyurethane. They don't call it that, but that's what it is. You know, I think they have one coat of nitro on there covered in a whole bunch of coats of poly. So then they could call it nitro. I, something silly like that. My God. But it does, it feels nothing like nitro. So that's the bottom line. What's it going to feel like to you? Okay. And you're being robbed of that feel. So I thought, hmm. So Leo Fender did... All these tallies, first four years and beyond, of course, with uh, spraying them with uh, butterscotch nitro lacquer. Why didn't they do that to the amps? Well, we know why. Because the wood is atrocious underneath the, the tweed, right? That's fine. That's perfectly fine, but, uh, you know, even the consumers back then were not the brightest people in the world. Guitar consumers never are, 
Okay, that's something you're going to learn if you ever get into the music uh, industry in, in, in any, to any extent. Um, so, he couldn't spray them. Because that would have been the easiest way to go, right? Spray them with butterscotch. He sprays a telly, then he sprays an amp. <laughs> so that's what I did. I sprayed it since this thing was made of aspen. Uh, I sprayed it with the real traditional historic vintage butterscotch nitrocellulose lacquer. And then I looked at it and I had this bright idea. I mean, uh, it's kind of boring like that. We don't want it flawless. We got to introduce flaws. Remember I told you that in a previous video? Of course, nobody, nobody took it seriously. Nobody even got what I was trying to say. After all, I am talking to guitar consumers, guitar players, hopefully, but consumers anyway. Not the brightest people in the world. No, no, no. PRS and all the other mainstream manufacturers know that very well and they use it to their advantage. They're smart. With me, it just fucking torments me to no end. Low IQ torments me terribly. I suffer. I scream in pain. You get it? Uh, you have to have at least an 80 IQ to watch this channel. All right. If you don't, then there's a lot of other <laughs> guitar channels that are tailored to 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 toddlers of any age, juveniles with with an 80 or less IQ. So I sprayed it with uh, butterscotch, and uh, I thought, wow, this is something. This is something interesting. Something new. In order for you, as an imperfect organism, organic entity that I hope that you are, I really do hope, you know, tell me that you are, you're organic, you're human, are you human? You will not be able to re relate or bond with something that's plastic and something that's Actually, beyond that, perfect, sterile, dead. Okay? That's why you must have imperfection. Once you have imperfection, that's the beauty of vintage instruments. That they're imperfect and they're variable. Okay? We don't want precision here. No, 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 no. Because you're not precise. You're not precise. Okay? You're not a robot. So we don't want robot-made instruments either. It's not going to work for you. You're not going to know why. But it's not going to work for you. Okay? You just... You'll never be able to do it. Okay? So... I wanted to relic it. I had to relic it. So that's the first instrument in this series. Okay? So let me show you what it looks like. And then, you know, if you're not that fucking lazy, you can go to the website. You can see it there too. All right? And later on, you're going to hear the amp in the sound files. Uh, so as I said, um, here it is. Everything had to be relicked, including the leather handle and uh, the metal parts. If you can see, this is the negative feedback control. And... Um, Uh, here it is. The serial number is 180519. And it's in the butterscotch. There's the rear of it. So.
There you go. Like I said, there's a lot more pics of it um, on the website. So there you go. It's a very, very cool amp. Very cool amp and um, one of a kind. in the original telly color butterscotch a blonde there you go with the oxblood grill an amp that never was but should have been could have been It's something that Leo Fender, I think, would have done had he been able to use a wood that he could paint much easier than Naughty Pine. Alrighty. You can see the 18th speaker in there. All right, so I really like the way the amp turned out. I really like the way it sounded. Uh, my God, there's no champ that has this kind of a, a bottom end, and it's so nice to have that bottom end, you know, especially having an 8-inch speaker. So it does something to the circuit, uh, you know, and everybody tells me, well, it's a little amp, it's a little speaker, don't expect any bottom end. Well, that's wrong, right? It does something to this circuit to give it a really fat sound, big sound. So anyway, after the amp, I kind of went, well, what now? What's the next project? Again, I don't want to mow the lawn, right? So I thought, wouldn't it be cool? to build a guitar as a sibling to the Samp in the same style, same finish, same color, same theme, right? Well, but what guitar? Well, that's not hard to figure out. It's got to be a Blackguard Butterscotch Telecaster. But in the Zachary style, of course. So I was itching for to have a vintage guitar. I was itching for it. Right? Now, I've built other similar, even Telecaster ZTs. Used to be called the F1. I've... I've done various similar instruments, but I wanted to go as close as I could to an actual vintage broadcaster, which is the name that preceded the Telecaster, right? So, again, I usually 
up to that time, more or less, I have always used an oil finish on my guitars, just perfectly fine. But again, once the amp was sprayed with nitro lacquer and butterscotch, I had to make a vintage telly with the same finish, with the same paint. So, now, it had to be close, it had to be historically correct, but improved in every way. But the essence of the characteristic of the guitar had to be maintained. Okay? Uh, now, other people don't have that attention to detail and tradition. They do disgusting things. You know, they put Floyd Rose on a telly body and, and ugly, disgusting, degenerate things like that. And humbuckers. It's no longer a Telecaster. Oh, I love Tele... You don't have a fucking Telecaster. You have some abomination, some mutation. Okay? So, that's not me. I don't do that. In fact... It bugs the hell out of me to even see it. So then I thought, well, let's go as far as we can in creating a guitar that never was, but could have been and should have been. So that entails, well, the finish has got to be right. The wood has got to be correct. Ash, swamp ash, lightweight ash. Uh, the pig guard shape has got a kind of hint, hint at the history. So let's go back even further to those broadcaster slash telecaster prototypes and the pig guard that they had, the rounded pig guard. Do you know your Guitar history? Do you know it or not? Or do you got to go back to history class, which they don't teach? All those disgusting guitar channels who are actually not guitar channels. They're, they're marketing channels now, right? They're all, they're all fucking selling something. They're all... <laughs> these manufacturers targeted at all these, uh, you know all these uh, channels uh, and, and their marketing products oh my god it's so disgusting and um you know you really know you've hit the big time if paul reed smith shows up with a free prs guitar ah <laughs> oh, cringe man cringe cringe paul reed smith the deep fry cook himself. Who was never a guitar builder? Did you know that? It's all a fraud. It's all a fraud. Okay? It's not a guitar builder. You know who a guitar builder is? Somebody that fucking builds guitars. It's as simple as that. Has he ever built guitars? You know, I think that he actually did build those couple of high school project guitars oh yeah i i think he may have maybe with little help from some other people <laughs> but that's as far as it goes people okay you have to you have to snap out of it and connect the dots yeah but anyway getting see you you got me distracted again what are you doing to me people so, the body thickness has to be correct. The body shape has to be correct. I mean really correct. I mean exact. To a vintage Telecaster. From the first four years of production. Except for my signature cutouts which give you 
a lot better high fret access, cuts down on the weight, and gives it a little styling instead of the big bulbous, awkward lower horn on a Telecaster. Now, Leo Fender was a genius, so, you know, we're, we're now 70 years into the future here, so, um, he did a great job, but he wasn't a guitar player, and he actually wasn't a guitar builder either, he was a designer, he was a, a TV and radio repairman, the, the tube TVs, remember those, no, well, maybe some of you watching this would remember tube TVs. No, 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 don't be dumb. I'm not talking about TVs that have tubes, as in picture tubes. No, that's not it. We all remember that. That was just a few years ago, right? No, no, no. We're talking in the back. TVs that ran with tubes, like tube amps. You know the tubes? No, you don't, you, you've never seen? Well, that's, that's what the TVs were. Now, I'm lucky in a way because I come from Eastern Europe and everything was like 30 years behind at that time because of uh, the beauty of communism. So, we had, as a kid, I was watching TVs that ran on tubes, just like guitar amplifiers of the period. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. In fact, I remember as a kid with my grandfather watching the moon landing in 1969. Yes, that moon landing, which never actually happened. You know, the moon landing that was shot in a, in a movie studio? Yeah, that one. Now, I remember watching that moon landing uh, on a TV that just had its tubes replaced or maybe it needed its tube replaced. <laughs> uh, the repair guy used to always come in and change the tubes in the back. Yeah. Now that was way before your time, you uh, fucking millennials. No, actually I feel for you. You're, 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 you're struggling. I know you are. So don't worry. I'm on your side. I'm trying to help. Anyway. That's what Leo, that's how he started by repairing those. So then he got into amplifiers, right? Uh, so I'm a player and I know how to set up a guitar and how to build a guitar and how to design the guitar. Not just that it functions as a guitar, but it functions as the best guitar in the world. So that's why when this particular guitar was completed. I played it. Or well, even before I played it. I looked at it. The way it turned out. And I said to myself, could this be the very best guitar I've ever made in my life? And it's weird in a way because I've made a lot more complicated guitars. I made fancy guitars. I made hollow bodies, semi-hollow bodies, you know, pick, you know, with more complicated uh, electronics and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but getting it right down to its very basics as a guitar that you want to go to at any time in terms of simplicity and versatility and just how effective it is as an, as an instrument, its practicality. I believed that this was the very best instrument I've ever made. And if I was to like take one instrument with me, this would be it. Now, I feel depressed and, and crushed at imagining that a lot of people will 
never experienced this instrument. Anyway, just a, just a side note. So if you go back to an early, well, any Fender really, even the vintage ones, you know, let's put all nostalgia aside here, people. All right, all you uh, famous players, even if you're a famous player, let's put all that nostalgia aside. They're not great feeling and playing guitars, okay? They're not. As I said before, they're honest. They're highly organic, which we love. Even if you admit it or not, you fucking PRS owners with your plastic dip, deep fried pieces of fucking blow up sex dolls. That's what it is. Plastic sex dolls is what you got. Anyway, so the vintage guitars were not like that. They were highly organic. And if you did nothing to them, just left them there for a few years, they aged themselves. <laughs> they relicked themselves. You can't relic a fucking poly, a thick poly covered guitar. All right? And you can't create a vintage reissue guitar with a CNC machine. Make sure you tell that to people who are lying to you. You got to set them straight. They're trying to deceive you like the devil. And they're stupid besides. They're either deviant uh, or they're... Uh, uh, so, where was I? Hmm. Yeah. So the scale length might as well make it 25 and a half, like the original. Okay. Uh, same bridge, of course. None of this new fucking modern Telecaster bridges or whatever the fuck it is. Um, pickup. Gotta be. Inspired by the original at least. It's got to look like the original. Function like the original. The value could be a little bit different. But then again, a lot of those vintage guitars, they varied a lot from year to year. For instance, the very first, the Broadcaster pickups, were, were wound with 43 gauge wire, which is a thinner wire than uh, Telecasters are known for. And they sounded very much different from what Telecasters are known for. They were thicker, warmer sounding, okay? Not as twangy. They were hotter. So, I built pickups. I uh, built both pickups for this. Now, getting back to the control plate, again, I went back to even before the first year, first four years of production, and I went back to the prototypes, and I went back to also, so a control plate that uh, was used on the prototypes, and definitely it was used on the first incarnation of the Fender Precision Bass called the Telecaster Bass, from 1951 I think from 1951 to 54 they were using this you know the small little control plate with two doms on it volume and tone well I didn't want a tone knob on here because I never use a tone knob and we don't want to hold back the tone by another potential potentiometer if we can help it so I left the tone off but I added the traditional Telecaster three-way switch. And in order to make such a control plate, you know, historically inspired, I had to fabricate it by hand, cut it out, grind it, polish it, whatever. 
get it exact, get it perfect. And I did that by using a traditional Telecaster. Well, made for me traditional Telecaster long plate. But of course, on mine, the knobs are spaced differently because on the original, uh, Leo wasn't thinking on that one and, and the players around him did not tell him, uh, you know, why do you put, why do you put the, the knob so close to the switch that was always wrong on the telecaster so anyway so my plates that i had custom made i had a whole bunch of them custom made uh and the knobs the, the plate itself is the same size but it's spaced differently so i use one of these plates I'm, I'm boring you i i know i'm boring you i use one of these uh uh one of these plates uh in order to fashion my prototype style fender base tele base style control plate you'll see it in you'll see it in in a in a minute uh what else what else uh of course uh frets are big frets stainless steel so you can really Play the shit out of this thing let me tell you this thing wails um it's made for the modern player and uh on this particular one i'm looking at it here i even forget some of the things i did like i say it's been a while it's been a while uh this thing is uh serial number 060619 so that's the sixth day of the sixth month 2019 now the amp that i just showed you was 180519 so it's the 18th day of the fifth month 2019 so this followed right that amp all right so this has got a big jumbo high frets really high again they never even dreamed of that uh in the 50s so this thing really plays. I uh, had to use the correct materials, the fiberboard for the pig guard, the fiberboard for both pickups to match. All right, it's gotta be right. The same uh, uh, input jack socket. Um, you know, even the strap buttons have to be correct and of course it's gotta be relicked <laughs> and it's relicking as i'm playing because i'm playing it a lot and you'll see it's even got a it's dirty it's dusty already from you know wearing out picks playing but then again it's got some of my signature improvements of course the zachary improvements sort of like the neck joint the spike neck joint uh the, the screws the neck screws it doesn't use a plate of course they're a lot further sp uh, play uh, uh spaced apart the screws so it's a lot more a lot more stable a lot more secure a lot more leverage holding the neck onto the body you know a lot more solid connection headstock of course is my signature Zachary headstock and uh, my nut material my string retainer setup and material it's all proprietary and what makes the Zachary guitar a Zachary guitar so here it is all right and again, on the website, you're going to get a lot of nice pictures. I don't know if it comes out really good on this camera and the lighting that I got. It's not very good. Not very good at all. But All right, so there's that control plate. Isn't that cool? The pots I use, by the way, have almost got no friction. So it's specifically made for volume swells. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, these are clones of 
the Black Gartelli early 50s knobs, okay? Did I mention that before? And you may not appreciate this, but you should. They're not made of brass, because brass is very heavy. And I, you know, I looked at these brass knobs, like, oh my God. So I went through a lot of trouble and expense. These are aluminum. They're very lightweight. It decreases the weight of the guitar. I don't want heavy knobs on my guitar. Now, here's your three-way switch. And very interestingly, this switch tip here, top hat, original. This is an actually original Bakelite, Bakelite switch tip that I picked up. I don't know where, but it's the original. <laughs> so it, it kind of makes it even more special. I put it on there, see? This is not a reproduction made of plastic. This is a Bakelite. So here's the fiberboard rounded prototype Telecaster and also a similar one was on the first precision base. Here's my very hot, quite hot, 43 gauge wire Telecaster bridge pickup. Perfectly staggered and beveled. Okay? You need to have it staggered if you want each string to be the same volume. Which a lot of you don't. You, you don't want each string to be the same volume. Why would you want that? You want each string to have a different volume when you play, right? <laughs> um, compensated bridge saddles. But original brass. Like they were back in the 50s. Okay. But compensated for intonation. And this type of bridge can either be strung from the top or through the body very cool i cut out this right here because it's impossible to play these things if they're not cut out again somebody didn't tell leo about that what were these people doing he he did have some players around him but of course they weren't rock and rollers there was no rock and roll at that time Elvis, Elvis was still in school. Uh, so that's got to be cut out like, nicely like that. Everything is uh, relic, as you can see. Perfectly relic. Look at that finish. Look at that. Look at that thin lacquer finish on there. And you can, you know, it's see-through. It's translucent. And you could see the beautiful ash underneath it, right? Oh, you've noticed the... Neck pickup. It's a Charlie Christian pickup. I took a little artistic liberty there and uh, made a matching Charlie Christian pickup with 38 gauge wire and my signature way of making it with the steel rod pull pieces. These are not magnets. The magnet is underneath. Uh, you know, I try to get it as close to the uh, Charlie Christian as I can. Uh, even though the Charlie Christian had a um, had a bar going across of it, but it's very hard to get uh, the correct stagger uh, on a bar. But here I could stagger. I could make the length of each pull piece what I want. See, because each string has different magnetic pull, and each string is at, at a different height from the pickup. Because of the curvature, right? So here's the the neck. Now the neck on this is not lacquer. It's oil finished. But it matches nicely. It's nicely tinted. It's nicely aged. And uh, the fingerboard is always compound radius. And this one is... Uh, I'm looking at my computer here. What it is. It's nine and a half up here and 15 and a half up here it's basically whatever i end up up with here you know variability is the name of the game here uh it's all going to be good but it's going to be different the one thing that stays the same is good now here's the headstock uh 
those those of you who still have your eyesight have noticed that uh, the tuners are embedded in the headstock. Yeah, see that? See that? All you tinkers, oh my god. All you tinkers just love this, don't you? Uh, let's turn it around. And, uh, see there's the eight screws, the finishing washers, the rounded neck joint, the very stable neck with the spike neck joint. I can vary the angle of the neck. I can set these things up like you would not believe. You, you have never played a guitar like this. You, you, have, you have no concept of it right now. Okay, you're just listening to me and you're going, yeah, sure, sure, sure. You have no, you, you know, if you can play with two shits, you'd be really blown away. Okay, so here's the, I could tell right now that the color of this whole thing, the colors are coming out not as the exact color because of the lighting that I have here. Sorry about that. I should have sun lighting in here, but well, you can't do everything, right? So here it is. Look at that maple neck. Look at that maple neck. And look at that relicking. Look at the string ferrules there. There's no string in them. So that's it. What else can I tell you? What else can I tell you about it? Um, pickups are reverse wound, reverse polarity to each other. So when you got it in the middle position, it works as a humbucker. It bucks the hum. You got that going here as well. And uh, that's about all. And it's relicking itself as we speak that's it that's it that's it that's it 25 and a half original scale 24 frets by the way always 24 frets uh, some idiot got a hold of me and wanted a guitar and he says he wants 21 frets on his guitar and I said are you trying to torment me on purpose here <laughs> what kind of an idiot are you why would you want 21 frets so he says well because we always want a guitar that our 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 heroes played well your your heroes were fucking originals and you're not you're a copier you gotta be an original people and why would you not want to have 24 frets a full two octaves why not another thing that players didn't tell these guitar manufacturers in the 50s neither Gibson neither Fender put 24 frets on there and give us two complete octaves anyway Zachary strings the 10 plus set on here and what else can I tell you? That's that's about it. That's about it. That's about it. That's about it. Uh, that's about it. Uh, look at the fret work. I don't. You can't really see it, you know, with a camera like this. But you gotta have perfect fret work if you want to have a perfect action. And I like my action very low because I want to fly on that fingerboard even if I'm using heavy strings I have very low action and you can only do that with perfect fretwork um, 
Yes, the dots are not plastic or clay or anything like that. They're ebony wood. They're always wood dots. And there you go. I got myself a vintage Telecaster. Oh, by the way, um, I can't really make a vintage guitar work for me. Most of them anyway, especially like a Fender. Because it doesn't have the things that I need as a player. So it's useless to me. So what I have to do is I have to create a custom vintage guitar or vintage guitars for my own playing and this is this is what this is it's vintage in terms of what it represents but it's got all the options that I need as a player that I could never get in a vintage instrument and you don't want to take a vintage instrument and put you know, high uh, stainless steel frets on it, and uh, you know you can't change the dimensions of the neck. And uh, a lot of those guitars don't play in tune, and they've got problems here and there, and uh, they're compromised in many ways. Even though they have a charm in many ways, of course, but they're compromised, and uh, they're very limiting. And, uh, you know, these, the great players of the past, uh, they were great, uh, you know, despite the limitations of the guitars that they did play. I think they would have done a lot better on an improved vintage style instrument, which this is.
my god, as soon as I turn on that recorder, my plane just falls completely apart. Oh my god. I could never be on stage. I would freeze on stage. I'd go... Anyway. Let's go to the middle position. Thank you. 
can't remember when I last time I tuned it. I mean, they don't need to be tuned, really, so... <laughs>
All right, so after that ZT slash Tele Blackguard vintage Telecaster broadcaster was completed, I still did not feel complete. Something was still missing in my life. And I didn't know what it was. It was another instrument. Something was missing. So, there had to be a third instrument in the series. But what? I got the amp. I got the telly. Well, what, what goes with the telly? Hmm. Can you guys guess? Like, what, what went with the telly at the time that the Blackguard tellies were first made? What went with them? Hmm. Do you know your guitar history? Or do you just walk into a so-called guitar store and look at the plastic PRS guitars? Is that what you do? Shame on you. Shame. Yes. You should hang your head in shame. Um, well, what, what went with the telly was the bass. That's right. Precision bass went with the telly, and it was very crude, crude bass. The first incarnation of that bass, it had no contouring in the body, you know, comfort contouring for the forearm, for the belly, nothing, just a slab of wood with a very small diameter, small radius edge rounding, just like the Telecaster. I had to do one to match the Tele and the Amp and to complete the series. And it had to be the same color, the same finish. It had to be historically inspired. Even though it would be an instrument that never was, but could have been and should have been. So I thought, well, what kind of bass would I like to play? Would I like to play a, like the first precision bass that Leo invented, created? No, I don't want to play that. It's too big. I'm not a bass player. Okay. Something a little bit more manageable for somebody like myself. But it's got to be historically reminiscent. So I thought, well, what body style would this be? Am I going to actually make like a precision uh, base body? No, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. That's what a tinkerer would do. No imagination, no creativity, no artistic nuance all right no artistic interpretation no artistic prescience so i thought hmm i know what i'm gonna do i got the perfect body for it i'm gonna do 
what I call a ZS body style and you've seen it before I've used it a little bit before it's going to be my main one of my main body styles um, I love it it's exact shape of a 50 Stratocaster body except again for the much smaller lower horn and the cutout towards the end of the body the curvy cutout and uh, usually has some comfort contouring but there's no way I was going to put it on this one because in 1951 Leo never thought of that so that would be wrong that's what a tinkerer would do so I'm gonna make a Telecaster base but I'm gonna use a ZS body with no contouring brilliant same thickness, one and three quarter inches. Well, it's got to be the same control plate, right? Same shape control plate that was found on that base. Except that one had two knobs on it, but I got to get a switch in here because I want to have two pickups on this thing. This is going to be a base. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I was talking about scale length. Like, do I want a 34 inch scale full size base? No, I do not. So what am I gonna do? Well, I've done the extra short scale base, but this is not gonna go in that direction. This is, that's a whole new instrument that I invented. That's right. And I hope to be making more of them once I can get those special strings made. Um, so, I'm just going to make a short scale base, which is a 30 inch traditional short scale base on this ZS slash Strat body with no contouring makes it look like a Telecaster body in a lot of ways. And it's got to have the same color and the same finish, the nitro finish in butterscotch. So this is the third instrument in the butterscotch madness series. Well, it's got to have the same rounded first generation precision base uh, fiberboard pig guard it's got to have the same pickups as that first generation base had of course it does no we don't put a Bartolini in this that's what a tinker we don't do what a tinkerer would do here okay There should be a sign here with a face of a tinkerer, a goofy tinkerer, with a line across it. Tinkerer is not allowed here. Or hacks. There's too many of those. And some people are even teaching tinkerers how to be tinkerers. Can you believe that? <laughs> There's channels that teach people how to build guitars, tinkerers. We don't need tankers. We need players. We need thousands and thousands of new players. I guess they're not smart enough to realize that part. We don't need boomer tankers. Okay? So... It's got to have an all maple neck, maple fingerboard. But I want to try something really new and revolutionary. 
I want to use my signature Zachary Samurai Uniplane headstock. How in the hell am I going to put bass tuners on that little headstock? How the hell is what you it's ask? Shut up. I don't care what time it is. I got my computer on here. Because I'm trying to look at the specs of this thing. Because I forget what I did. Again, it's been a while. You guys are getting old news. This is old news. This stuff is stale now. Okay? It's stale. But I got to do it. Right now, I'd be making necks. And I got to make a fucking video. <sighs> so... Where was I? Before I got distracted once again. I'm getting real pissed off. What was I talking about? Tell me. What was I talking about? Oh! Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, the tuners. Well, I'm not going to use traditional tuners on a little bass like this. That would be That's what a tinker would do. We're not tinkers here. Okay? And I hope there's no tinkers watching. I hope there's no members of, 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 of guitar tinkering forums watching this. Okay? You're not allowed on this channel. Guitar players is what I want. I'm on the lookout for... I'm searching for guitar players. And really good ones if possible. Those ones that don't have fucking YouTube channels doing endless fucking pedal reviews. We don't need any more fucking pedals, please. Please. You're driving me out of my mind. We don't need any more. What are those things called? Cavernous or atmospheric delay pedals, please. Digital delay pedals, you know, that makes makes me hearing that stuff just makes me depressed. Like, oh, oh dreamy. Oh, 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 oh. All we need is a little slapback and a little reverb, and that's all we need. No fucking spatial, out of space delays and reverbs. Okay, none of that. Finished. No more. We don't need any more guitar pedals either. Who's buying this shit? There's not enough people buying this shit. There's so many people in the pedal business. My God. Everybody and their dog is in the fucking pedal business. And some of them are actually marketing other people's pedals. It's really bizarre. It's really bizarre. Uh, you know... Um, the guitar consumer. Whoa. That's a strange animal, let me tell you. A whole bunch of beta males. That's what makes up the guitar consumer crowd. So, again I got distracted. What the hell was I? Oh yeah, the, ha the tuners. So I had this brilliant idea. Mm-hmm. Brilliant ideas is what we specialize in at this shop. Unique stuff. Stuff that nobody has done before. Stuff that that will make morons say, Hey dude! You can't do that. That's weird, dude! That's the kind of stuff we strive for here. That's right. So, I've done this before, but... You're not bright enough to realize that. Actually, some of you are bright. Some of, some, of you, some of you correct me on the stuff I've done in the past that I've forgotten about. See, I've forgotten more shit about guitars than most people know about guitars. Okay? That's the way it goes. So, I used guitar tuners for this thing, and it worked out great. So, the same setup as I use on my, all my guitars, I used on this bass. And everything fit just right. 
you know, little mods here and there and placement and I angled the string retainer nicely. Aesthetics also comes in as well. You know, you got to be artistic. All right. I used to do watercolor paintings. I did that for several years. I was going to be a professional watercolorist in my youth. I was quite good at it. I got paintings all over the house. And um, so that comes in handy when you're relicking. Relicking is actually like painting, like artistry. Okay, and the reason we relic, again, is not to pretend we got an old guitar. No, 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 no. We relic to psychologically introduce imperfection. That's right. Something that Paul Reed Smith doesn't understand. Okay? You can't make a vintage instrument out of plastic. That's got a perfect BMW car finish on it. With grotesquely figured wood. No, you don't do that. No vintage guitar was like that. They were organic. And they relic themselves. The Tweed Amps relic themselves. And the Nitro Lacquer guitars relic themselves. They wanted to become as imperfect as possible. And that's why when you pick one up, it's organic. It feels good. It's like, well, don't want to get graphic, but the difference between making love to a real woman as opposed to a plastic sex doll. And a lot of you guys, you got sex dolls, don't you? In the form of the guitars. Same concept. I know you do. And you're kind of going, boy, this guy's fucking weird. It's going to take you a while. It may take you, if you're really bright, a few days. Not so bright, a few weeks. Even less bright, a few months. But most of you, it'll take you years to comprehend what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing funny about what I'm saying. So, had to make the pickups, but they had to be the exact same style pickups as was found on the 51 first generation Telecaster base. So, I made this a 30 inch scale, short scale base, and uh, I knew what I had to do. I had to make it narrower at the bridge so that guitar players can more easily play them. It's a small bass. Everything's got to be scaled. Scaled down. Alright. So, there was no bridge. There's no bridge I could use. I could just buy. So I had to fabricate from scratch my own bridge plate. I found saddles luckily that I made work. But that bridge had to be completely handmade. No CNC's. Everything had to be measured with a ruler, marked, drilled, contoured, countersunk, polished, and then relict. Everything had to be accurate too. All done by hand. Hey, this is how people used to do things. When men weren't drinking soy juice. Yeah. That's the way it was. Believe it or not. And most of you don't believe it. Yeah. The Golden Gate Bridge. Was made with slide rules. Not computers slide rules and pieces of paper 
and a pencil. Drafting on paper by hand. Yes, that's the way it was made. And look how great these things are. Yeah. That's right. The big corporations, the, 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 the high-tech stuff. Didn't get into the act. Now you could be a complete moron. Not back then. You got to, you had to know your shit. You have to know your shit. You have to be skilled. You have to be able to repair your car, your tractor, build a house, build a barn, take care of your animals. You have to have skill in everything. Skill, 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 skill. And I love skill. I love competence. Yeah. I can't find it anymore. I look and look and look. Man, what passes as males these days. It's just atrocious. But a lot of those males are actually... Well... <laughs> you knew what I was going to say, right? It's... It's depressing. It's depressing, yeah. Anyway... Again, I forgot where I was. But regardless, I'm just going to show you this base, okay? All right, well, here it is. Now, take a look at that. Again, it's the same finish. Same relic. Now, look at the pickups. Now, this pickup I had, where I got it from, I have no idea, but it was perfect. And because the string spread is quite narrow here it's only 52 uh, 52 millimeters as opposed to 60 millimeters 59 or 60 on a traditional fender full size long scale base so this is 52 as opposed to 60 and so i had to angle this pickup not a problem but then i had a real problem here there was no pickup made with such a narrow string spread and I could not angle this obviously it had to be flush with the fingerboard so this one is completely fabricated by me in the same you know to the same design as the original uh, Telecaster base pickups and look at that it's wound in in uh, with string black string and uh, you know, pole pieces are, those are the magnets, the pole pieces, on, on this style of pickup, uh, on, on Gibson, I mean on uh, Fender style pickups. And, uh, had to make the flat work and everything else so that everything matches in terms of uh, spacing. And here's the bridge plate that I had to make, again at 52 millimeters from center to center the first string and the fourth string um, and you see these are compensated they can be turned and and intonated properly and there's the control plate but on this I had to add on a base you got to add a tone pop tone control so what did I have to do? I had to do a stacked. You have to use stacked knobs with a stacked pot. Worked out really nice. This is original Fender style stacked knobs that Fender used just a few years after a similar, you know, the similar base came out. So it looks proper, looks right. Everything's nicely reliced. Even the knobs are dirty and scratched up. And uh, look at that plate, the way it's embedded into the pig guard. Again, fiber pig guard rounded here, just like the original base. And you've got the fattest frets that I've got stainless steel, high, big, fat, humongous, beautiful. And uh, 
There's the fret work. And um, there's the nut, string retainer, and then there's the nicely spaced guitar tuners, vintage style, Clouson style, guitar tuners, uh, also relict, of course. And uh, take a look at that. Again, a lot of pictures on the website. And there you go. There you go. Telecaster. Impa Jack. Let's turn it around for you. There you go. Give it more room here. Look at that. Look at that. It's banged up. It's banged up. And again, the same neck joint set up. My signature neck joint set up with the spike. The neck sits on the spike. Does not sit on the wood. Uh, look how look at that color I got on there look at that vintage color better than vintage look at that look at that serial number what is it seventeen zero eight nineteen seventeenth month the eighth of the yeah there it goes seventeen 0819 17th day of the eighth month 19th year and uh, look at these tuners nice relicking eh? and there you go look at that 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 age on that look at the patina look at the color of the, the differences in colors see it's a lot of work a lot of work it's like doing a watercolor as I said these are special lightweight ferrules again they're not brass brass is too heavy for my liking and um, they're perfectly balanced in tension strings balanced to each other uh, and uh, compound radius fingerboard again 24 frets as always 24 frets as always ebony dots And uh, that's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. Volume, tone, three-way switch, and uh, reverse wound, reverse polarity pickups, and original thickness body, swamp ash, translucent, Butterscotch paint, nitro lacquer, and that's all I can tell you. So there it is. There it is. You see why I can't go to any guitar stores? I, I literally can't. I can't stomach it. So I have a inspiration and I build it
there you go on to the next project right that's right I gotta build I'm not here to sell I'm here to build you see how it's difficult to sell these things for me I can't let these things go breaks my heart that's it that's all I got that completes the Butterscotch Madness series. Stay tuned for the next project coming up.